it was like maybe two and a half years ago that I started to get a bit anxious before traveling. And I didn't know what, where this come from and what it actually was. So I thought, okay, that's just like a bit of performance anxiety or, or maybe you're afraid that the plane will crash because now you're, you're traveling so much. But I didn't really deeply go into it. And it would increase, increase and get more and more. I made the mistake not to really care about it, you know, I thought, well, maybe that's something you just have to live with it, you know. But at one point, after a pretty exhausting tour, I came back and it just wouldn't stop. The anxiety stayed. That's when I figured out, okay, there's something seriously wrong. a bit late because I left my headphones at the hotel. What happens if you're late at Bolru, you know? It's a bit... I don't want to be late on this gig, actually. <laughs> it's a bit of a important one, I think. Excuse me? Entrance is on Makello Street, it says. Open love, respect for Mr. Wokats. It's Mario City, John Ensemble, for the, for the next 45 minutes inside the boiler room. I always embraced the, the hedonistic aspect of nightlife, you know, and I still like the liberty that is in there, that you are able to do whatever you want. I never went to after parties to get fucked, but it was more like there was so much positiveness with people surrounding me and saying like, oh, I loved your set, don't you want to come and play a bit more at my place? That's what is tempting. You're not going the back to the hotel up? right now, right? I am. No. I am, because actually at eight no. o'clock, at eight o'clock in the morning, I'm going to a record fair. Where? Somewhere in London, I don't know, I have to look it up again. It's a lot of discipline to show the people that you actually care about them, and I honestly do, you know, and that you appreciate all the nice words and, and the goodwill. I love the rewind, man. It was such a gangster move, you know, like, fuck you, I need to hear this back. I feel like you're near the end of the set. The crowd wants it, I'm gonna yeah, do it. Yeah, 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 that's cool. All right, man, thank you so much. I'm mad with records. For me, there's that's another thing that really calms my mind. It's almost like swimming, you know. It's not as physical, but it's also where all other thoughts just go away. I've been looking for this for a long time. It's an original copy, right? Yeah. So what's all the commotion? Fucking hell, man. It's like a... Dive over, get in there. Who, who's to say it's like a, like a, he has a reputation for he, he letting does things good loose? Bargains, bargains. Okay. If you like look for certain records and you finally find them after years of looking for them, you will always remember that, you know, and you can't replace that feeling. Let's say it like this I haven't got into the four figures yet, but there's one record I'm after right now. If I see this ever for sale, I'm definitely going to spend four figures. There's no discount today, they're priced to sell. Thank you very much. You want them, you're going to have to pay the price, I'm afraid. Okay. Otherwise, put them back, okay. let someone else have a go. I was never like a super shy, introverted guy. I always liked to party. Not like super excessively, but you know, like I had a few beers too much and then the next day I had to go on a plane and play another gig and I was like, oh, poo, can I still manage, you know? But um, these days are a bit gone, you know? I mean, I try to really watch it these days. I 
I would say when I was like 18 years, 19 years old, that I was also touring intensely. And that was the first time that I experienced like a lot of flying and airports and uh, hangovers. When I was young, I was really going for it and I loved it. I mean, I've worked my whole life to get to the point to being able to tour that much and, you know, make a living with music and spread my music and make people happy, you know. At one point, there was something happening to me that I couldn't really put a finger on, you know. For somebody that hears anxiety, it sounds a bit, you know, like, okay, so you're anxious, what's the big deal? But it came to a level where I couldn't sleep anymore, you know. That's when I figured it's too much, you know. That's, I can't perform, I can't basically live like this, you know. It would always be that the anxiety comes before the traveling and then goes away. As soon as I came back home, it was gone. Well, one day basically, it just stayed, you know, and it wouldn't go away at all. You know, some people have panic attacks where it all comes very sudden and then it's away like this again. But with a general anxiety, it can stay and it's this feeling that you are about to get a panic attack, but it never really comes. But you're always on the edge. You can't sleep, you, you're not hungry anymore. And it's really intense. That was really like the hardest month of my life, I guess. Yeah. Amaranta, she really helped me um, through that time in the sense that you don't really want to, to, to go with, to your friends with stuff like this because you feel a bit ashamed about it, you know. It's still something that is not, not really easy to understand for most people. To live together and have this kind of shelter or home or whatever you want to call it, that's definitely what helped me most. It's very scary to see somebody in a way fall and especially somebody that you love. The whole club scene is kind of a dangerous environment and it's easy to get lost in there. From traveling intensely, I took off half, half a year. You know, you never know what happens if you cancel so much shows, you know. It could be that people say, okay, so what's happening with this guy, you know. I could tell him all the time that he should take it easy and slow down a little bit, but in the end, after this experience, it's something that he learned himself. The first time that I started to think like really long term was when I had the burnout, you know. I would not think too much about can I make a living out of this in the next 10 years or is this really what I want to do? And the burnout just like was a trigger for me to, to really reflect on, on my life in general, you know, where I want to be, what I want to be and um, how I want to do certain things. What I've learned is just it, it's really a physical thing, you know. If you don't take care of your body, then you will get these kind of problems. I do like five kilometers a week, usually, swimming. I've always been too lazy to do sports and now I have to really kick my ass to do it. I try to pick shows now that I really, really want to do. I don't really want to go back to doing eight or nine shows a month. I don't necessarily need to see it all, you know. Well, that's a buy for sure. I love this. Okay, I'm an activist, yeah. I play these records to people, make them buy more records. Yeah, this is this like one track on here which you're gonna love, Faded Lady. It's like super good African boogie. Or like more like Roy Ayers kind of.
there's nothing in the world that comes close to having this kind of moment, you know, like just having your endorphins to adjust to the level that there's nothing as exciting as this is quite hard. You know, like you don't have you don't have gigs like this in a certain period and you're like fuck I really miss it, you know? There's something elementary missing. The last 30 minutes, man, fucking hell. A moment like this, sharing a moment like this, it, it's about the music and everybody's having fun and everybody's honest about it. It's definitely addictive, you know? <laughs> it's a drug, but music is a drug in general, you know? Once you're into music, there's no way out. If you're in it for real, if you're in it for the right reasons, you will never lose this. This is always going to stick around with you. I started so young, you know. For me, it was always music. It's all I know, you know. I, if I would stop doing this now, I had no idea what I would do, you know. It's, it's my whole purpose in life. I heard that uh, you have taken things a bit slowly. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's good. I do like three or four shows a month, and that's so much better. Oh, really? like, oh, no, yeah. that's great. That's awesome. Some of my closer of the people that I know a bit better or that I would consider friends, like taught, um, they know what happened. They knew that I uh, had to stop for a while and that I now play less. Are you gonna keep going with that? I mean, that's yeah, I don't, I don't really want to change it. And again, like I do, like last weekend I played two shows, this weekend I played two, but that's it for a while. Now I have two weeks off and I'm so much looking that's, forward to it. That's fantastic. Yeah. With issues like this, it's not like it's going to be a way 100%. It's something that I have to live with probably my whole life and that I also, in retrospect, had um, basically lived with my whole life, but I just didn't know that it actually is anxiety. It was just the odd thing that would happen from time to time. I didn't know you could play that well. Thanks. Did you have lessons or...? Huh? Did... Yeah, I would have never imagined to be on the same lineup with guys like these a couple of years back. Being able to do a DJ set while guys like Todd is playing a live show, you know? So it's special. This is what I've, all the years, all the 10 or longer even, 12, 13 years that I've made music and produced music in my small basement led up to this point of standing here today. And I'm super grateful to, to, to stand here today.